Next up is Will. Thank you. <laughs> who is going to talk about being on the front page of Hacker News. Will, take it away. Thank you very much. So my, my big assumption with this was that people know what GitLab Pages is. Can I have a, just a quick hands up, people who know what GitLab Pages is? Okay, so that, I'd say that's maybe like 52%, which if you're from the UK, you know that's an overwhelming majority. <laughs> Then there's nothing else political in this, uh, I, I swear. So we've, we've said that we live in a Git-centered world, and, and really everything is version controlled. You know, when I send uh, messages to my wife, I expect her to read the Git commit messages and, and do a review on, on what I've just told her. So we live in a Git-centered world, and, and it's because, you know, absolutely everything I do is to do with code. Like, every single thing. In my blog, that is mainly just code that I'm using uh, because I'd r much rather just write Git, uh, Git commit messages to actually write a blog. And what we're doing is, is kind of building up this whole sense where we are becoming collaborators through version control to do all of the different bits of software and infrastructure deployment that we want to do. Um, this is a picture of me in, a, in front of a monastery recently. I've, these are my roles. I'm a, a DevOps consultant at HeliCloud. And so largely, if you could tell me what a DevOps consultant does, that would be really good. Um, I'm a Docker community leader. Uh, I'm a newly uh, initiated GitLab hero of about like two weeks. Um, I haven't done the, the merge request to put myself on the page yet, sorry. I'm also co-organizer of the London GitLab meetup that hasn't had a meetup yet. Anyone from London? Thank you for volunteering. I'll be in contact with all of you. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've got 16 guitars, and I started GitLab in, in, in January 2016. So the history of my site, which is really what everyone wants to know about. You know, I've, I've, I've had a website for quite a long time, about like 15 years, something like that. Um, I had Drupal on it for, since 2009, and, and that has with it, you know, a massive weight of, oh, uh, God, I've got to upgrade things all the time, and I have security problems. So I went... Static site, that's the only way to go. All the cool kids do it, that's what my friends tell me to do. And I get it easier to maintain, I get no security problems, I get you know, easy to configure things. And I only need a blog. If you're, if you're building a WordPress site and you only need a blog, then <laughs> you've, you've got a load of new problems for you. And why I use a GitLab Pages is because I already have a GitLab account, i.e. nothing new for me to learn. If there's only a certain amount of space for me to learn new things, I don't want to have to learn new things. I, you know, I've got a GitHub account mainly so I can push stuff to Docker Hub and, and Ansible Galaxy. I don't really have it for another reason. Um, and you know, it is free for me to use as well. Now, I've recently tried to start skateboarding. My six-year-old's better than me. So, at some point, I'm going to be like, really good at skateboarding, and I'll give you a demo next year. Um, but the road to success is paved with failure, and I am no different to anyone else with failure. You know, I've failed lots and lots and lots and lots of things. Um, I'm not going to talk about them all now because you'll get the wrong impression of me. But you know, if you're not trying, you're, you're not failing. And, and one of my big ones with GitLab Pages was that I unsuccessfully pitched to move hundreds of sites into GitLab Pages. And the main reason I did that was because normal people don't write Markdown. So unfortunately, when I asked marketing teams to write Markdown, they kind of go, no, I, I don't understand what any of that is. And, and they're missing out. Definitely, they're missing out. Um, I, you know, I write a lot of my messages in Markdown. So I moved my site into Hugo because you know, cool kids use use Golang as a, as a language. You know, I want to be really cool and up with it. And it's pretty simple to use, and, and it's a small thing that I get to learn. And pretty much migrating, I had a lot of copy pasta involved in that, as I restructured content from the last 15 years into Markdown, which I really enjoy that. Yeah, that was, I think I probably enjoyed the first like two minutes. And the other, I don't know, two years of rewriting things into Markdown was a bit of a pain. So this was kind of my process. I've, oh, I've, I've got a theme. I've put it in GitLab. I'm turning on GitLab pages. And then basically done. Job done. And then I actually I needed to spend eight months more doing things. But that's definitely like finished, right? 
And then I spent another three months actually making it look like I wanted to. And then it was actually done. And everyone knows that once you've made a website, right, there's like a lot of other stuff that you've got to do, which is like boring stuff as in actually connecting a domain to it. Well, I, I can do that. That, that, was, that was free. I get a, a, a certificate. I've got another GitLab pipeline that goes and generates certificates for all the sites I'm running at the moment, which is pretty nice. I put some CI next to it, put some Cloudflare on top, because at the moment we're only going out of one region for, for GitLab.com pages, at least where I'm working. So there's a, a CI process. You can see there is some processing in here. This is about linting CSS, and you know, you've never lived if you've not linted C CSS. And there's actually a bit in here. So if style lint changes in, in how it works, I get a patch, and it can be automatically uh, applied to my merge request, so I don't have to write anything to change stuff. And that's pretty good. This is how I test things. Does it build, or does it not build? Builds, then that's a good job, and I can move on to deploying it. Ta-da, I've deployed it. I've now got a, another site running or an update to my site running. If you kind of look at Hugo, you'll see in the background it goes and builds a load of artifacts, creates a static site behind the, the scenes in about, you know, some in the region of three or four seconds for me. I've got about 1,500 artifacts, I think it makes in that. So it's pretty quick. Um, and then I've also got a little performance thing on the end because I have like my own vanities to be interested in. Oh, what did I do last year? This year must be much better than last year. It's not always better, but I have a little thing for running some site speed stuff so I can actually tell people about it. But this is actually of, of great value when we think of the long term, if you were doing this in a corporate environment. It starts to be a value explainer to your uh, superiors. So pretty simple current pipeline, right? And we've got that sorted. And I post some things online, you know, I tell my mum, my mum loves everything I do, thank you mum. I put things in on Twitter and LinkedIn and Hacker News and I do some more blog posts. And I did a blog post about web browsers, about how Brave is brilliant as a web browser, which I still think it is. Um, and then it was on the front page of Hacker News and I was like, uh, this isn't what I intended when I had like 50 Twitter messages and I'm like, I'm not this popular. I've only got like three friends um, and, and most of them don't read anything I do because they think it's boring. Um, but don't read the comments. They all thought I was, you know, some, they asked for proof for how I decided what I was doing in 2011 as if I should have like some kind of notebooks for what, I, what were you doing 2011? No, I don't, I don't know. I just made this stuff up. <laughs> That, that's my year in, on analytics. That was uh, a week in April. That was an hourly one. So I had like 600-ish users uh, in, in at 5 o'clock, um, which I thought, no, definitely GitLab.com, it's going to like, they're going to cut me off. They're obviously monitoring the metrics, and they'll go, whoa, this guy, he's abusing that. That sounds like a, some kind of crazy guy putting a site out on there. Um, but fortunately, they didn't. And I got with it, you know, everything for free. So you can see all the things I get there for free, apart from domains, damn them, controlling me with their costs of £4.69 a year. So hopefully, what we've learned in this fun talk, right, is that GitLab Pages is really good for deploying static sites. You don't need anything else. And if you don't have to have anything else, why on earth would you get something else? Uh, the costs are pretty much non-existent, and that Hacker News is, is challenging, uh, certainly if you read the comments. And what I'm trying to get to at the end of this is really that in a Git-centered world, we are the decision makers for how the future of software and infrastructure goes forwards. And that's an important thing for us to try and think on in the future as we go forward and build new tools and new systems and deploy them in new ways, that our future is dependent on how we are going to work. And hopefully, you'll see that GitLab is going to represent that in the future, and it's going to bring a lot of value to, to everyone. And that is it. Lots of image credits. Thank you very much for listening.